Hey guys, Michael Corsentino for Shutter Magazine with a look at Light with Muscle. This month it's all about athletic lighting. Uh, there are lots of different ways that you can approach uh, lighting athletes, but this is uh, a real kind of go-to solid method that works every time, especially when you're talking about uh, lighting the figure, um, and it works perfectly with athletes. And so we'll dig into that and kind of look at a couple different looks uh, that are a variation of the same kind of lighting pattern. Uh, look at some of the tools, etc. So let's jump right in and have a look at the first setup. Uh, okay, so here you can see the result and you can see the lighting pattern on the right. Uh, let's take a look at what we've got going on here. So basically we have a cross light pattern happening and cross light is perfect um, for this kind of light because it really helps to sculpt for this kind of subject matter because it really helps to sculpt uh, what you have going on with the figure. So let me just show you what I've got here. Here is my accent light and the accent light is providing this light. Let's just make our brush a little smaller. Uh, and then we've got our, or that's, I'm sorry, that's our key light and then our accent light here is providing the light on that side of the subject. And the reason that I, that I said it was an accent light is because actually it can either be an accent light or a, um, a key light. And that's one of the great things about this. So I just wanna show you that before. Here you can see it where I've got the light on the camera right uh, serving as the key light and the light camera left is serving as the accent light. But all I need to do with this kind of lighting arrangement is change the position of my model. And you can see here that right away uh, I can turn my accent light into a key light and vice versa. So it's a very, very flexible arrangement for lighting. So let's just go back to that and take a look again at what we have going on here, exactly how this was uh, set up. Um, you can also see here that um, I have flags uh, inserted here in front of the lights in order to stop flare from kicking back into the camera. And I'm gonna show you an example of that later. Um, I'm using V-flats in this case, and uh, for the second look, I also used flags uh, and cutters, uh, which are just fabric covered um, frames. These are uh, foam core, black foam core. And I'm gonna, uh, I have a shot of those as well to show you also. Um, so really simple setup, and but basically, which is, but just a, a dynamite look, a very polished and finished look that really helps to sculpt the figure uh, and bring some drama to the subject matter. Uh, so what else do we have going on here? Well, we've got a white background, but the, the background is not white. So is that a function of post work? Not entirely. Uh, I was able to really get the background very, very dark. Look 2, I wanted a white background because in look 2 I'm going to project a shape uh, onto the background, um, which I need to be white. So the way that I kept the background very dark and then, you know, finessed it a little bit in post just to make it even darker was by, first of all, pulling the subject and the lights away from the backdrop and by using strip lights. And you can see them here in the lighting diagram. Now, the cool thing about strip lights is what they do is they focus the light into a narrow strip of light. And because of the way that they're angled here also, they spill very little light onto the backdrop. Very little of that light that's coming from them is reaching the backdrop, right? So that's key. Now you can also use honeycomb grids in order to really even further restrict the light into a column. Unfortunately, the Ellen Chrome strip boxes that I have here, um, I didn't have grids for those, so I made do, and I relied on the angle of the soft boxes, or the strip boxes. Uh, and their distance from the background in order to control how much illumination there was on this background. And I wanted very, very little, if any at all. I didn't want any, but I had a little bit, so I just corrected for that in post at the end. Um, and I also am using these V-flats, again, because when you have lights, specifically the key light, in this case, uh, that are kind of angled toward the camera, uh, you can get some flare because that light uh, will come into the lens and give you some flare. So in order to correct for that, you can just throw a uh, 
B flat or a flag or or again what's known as a cutter um, in front of the light and that is going to really help to cut that flare and give you a nice contrasty shot okay so let's turn this off and let's take a look at some of the tools that we used for our shoot uh, again I used uh, Rotolux uh, Ellen Chrome soft boxes or strip boxes I used two sizes I used a small size camera right for the key light and a larger, longer size um, for the accent light just because I wanted a little bit more light on the hair and down uh, the bottom, uh, the legs and you know kind of more of a three-quarter light where the key light could be a little shorter, uh, not as tall, right? And that worked out and gave a nice look to the, uh, to the light. Let's see, I also wanted to show you the V-flats that I was using. V-flats are really simple. They're just basically four by eight sheets of foam core um, and they're available, uh, the sheets are available uh, with white and black, uh, reversible white on one side, black on the other. So you just tape them together so that you can use them. Um, and these, I just, this is just a picture I grabbed uh, off Google, but um, basically the way that I do it is, um, they are, it would be black and black, so the, the inside of that V that you're seeing there on the right would be entirely black, and the same thing on the other side would be entirely white. And this way it allows you to use them uh, in a V formation, uh, either as a reflector or to subtract light or block light. Okay, in this case, I would be using them completely folded together with the black side facing the, uh, the camera. All right, uh, okay, so that is look one. Let's move on to look number two. All right, here we are with look number two. Now also, I did want to mention, um, I started out, I, want, I wanted to show you guys what the effect is of just using one light. Uh, and it's, again, it's an acceptable effect. You can do a lot with it. But really the thing about this athletic lighting and why it sings is, you know, that cross light really, really brings it to life and adds a sculptural dimension. And that's the great thing about just adding one additional light really, really brings things to life. So the shot that you're seeing now on screen is only using one light. It's using a, um, a Mola Solo, which we're going to cover. I'm going to show you that piece of equipment uh, in a little bit. Um, it's a silver interior beauty dish, and it gives a really nice contrasty light. Um, and we're, that's the only light that we have right now, aside from the background light. So in order to add that, to create that sculpture and that dimension, that sort of volumetric quality that we want with fitness lighting, and with lighting in general, really, but it's especially true when you're lighting the figure, um, is just to add that second light. So let's take a look at what happens when we all of a sudden we just add another light. You can see what a difference that makes. It just does so much to the image to boost the sense of volume and structure and kind of sculpting quality that you get. Um, okay, so that's that. Now you can also see here, I also included this image because it shows you what happens when you don't have a flag or a V-flat blocking the light, in this case, this light right here, and you get flare. So without this, I'm getting a lot of flare happening in that image, all of this, right? Now, I don't want that. So if I take this away, and I'm going to show you the final now with everything in place. That's what I get. Okay, so let's go over exactly what I have going on here. I'm just going to go back to this uh, markup and get rid of this stuff. All right, so I kept the accent light that we had in look one, which is that Ellen Chrome large soft box, strip box, right? And that's giving me all of this stuff over here, lighting up all this, which is great, and it's giving a nice highlight on the ball, on the Swiss ball, and all of that, great. And the key light is providing us with all of this, and again, this is a Mola, soft lights uh, solo beauty dish uh, and that's got a silver interior which is giving me a nice kind of specular contrasty light and providing all of this stuff here uh, this light is kind of a specialty item uh, and this is a pro photo pro spot um, uh, sorry pro zoom spot 
Uh, and that has these cutters um, and blades inside of it. Uh, and it's a focusable uh, lens as well that allows you to create really crisp and defined shapes like this that are just kind of impossible to do otherwise. It's a really pricey tool if you um, have to buy it retail. Uh, luckily, I was able to find one on eBay, uh, kind of an older generation model that doesn't have a built-in light. Uh, you, you put the light inside of it, which is fine. Uh, it works exactly the same. Uh, so I was lucky enough to find that, and it's just a wonderful tool. You can do just a ton of stuff with it. Um, and you can see here also that I am, again, using um, the V-flat here, and but I'm also using it behind the... Uh, beauty dish because the beauty dish was adding some spill onto the background and kind of diluting uh, that triangle shape that was being created here by the Profoto zoom spot. Uh, and that was a problem. And I also wanted it nice and dark because I didn't want to have to do excessive amounts of work in post. Right? Okay, so let's turn off that and let's take a look now at the equipment. Right, so we talked about this is what the Profoto zoom spot looks like. Uh, let's just go over here to this slide, right? So this is what the Profoto Zoom Spot looks like. You can see here that it is uh, kind of a Canon. None of this is really to scale. This thing is massive. Uh, this is the Mola Solo, the silver interior for that really nice contrasty look. And here's our strip light right here. This is what we used as for our accent light. And again, so this light is going to be uh, camera left. This light is going to be camera right. That's our key. And this is for the background, right? Okay. Uh, flags, V-flats, and cutters. So this is the whole picture when it comes to kind of controlling and shaping the light and blocking it from the background and blocking it from the camera. These are, the, these are your go-to tools that you're going to use when it comes to those things, right? Uh, again, V-flats are great. And these are, the funny thing about this is some of the most important tools are the ones that cost the least amount of money. And in this case, these are kind of studio essentials like and location as well. Uh, not so much the V-flats, but the flags and cutters. Having these tools uh, is really going to allow you to shape and control light. They're inexpensive. They're great. Um, they're also available in um, kind of mesh uh, versions that allow, cut a certain amount of the light, um, but allow some of it to pass through, So, and they're called nets. Uh, so definitely, you know, check out V-flats, uh, cutters, and flags. At a minimum, V-flats are, you know, like 40 bucks or something. Uh, you can make them, you just, you know, get them from an art supply store and tape them together and you've got some an amazing reflector or subtraction panel at your disposal. I use them constantly. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the overall lighting gear and some of the accessories and other tools that were used to produce this shoot. I used Profoto 7A 2400 watt second packs along with... Um, Pro, uh, Pro Photo Pro heads. So in on one, uh, in look one had just two lights uh, and two generators, um, and look two had three lights and three generators. Um, I also used Pocket Wizard Plus threes to trigger the lights, and a light meter, a flash meter. Sakonic L758 DR is my go-to light meter for all things metering. Uh, again, I, I get this a lot about light meters. Uh, the one thing that you have to understand about light meters is that they're just a tool, and you use them when you need them, and you don't use them when you don't need them, all right? The thing about a DSLR or any kind of camera with a built-in meter uh, is that it can't read flash. When you're working in manual flash, it cannot read flash. So the only way to measure your flash, the output of the flash, how much power you're getting, how to set your lens, to you know, get the desired f-stop if you want to shoot at f16, etc. Uh, the only way to really determine that is to use a flash meter to figure that out. And uh, again, uh, it's just a tool. It doesn't make you more creative or less creative. It just makes you accurate and consistent uh, and allows you to know exactly where you're at with your lighting. So I'm a big believer in light meters. Again, I don't use them all the time, but I, you know, when I need them, they're there and I use them. Okay. All right, let's move on to our closing slide. So here's just a look overall at what we created using this very simple lighting technique of just cross lighting, angling the soft boxes, the strip boxes in a way that the light does not fall on the background. We use some flags to block the light as well from the camera, as well as from the background. We kind of modulated the contrast a little bit by introducing the different light source, uh, different modifier using the Mola um, Solo to give a bit more contrast to the key light. We threw a cool background pattern, introduced some geometric shapes on the shot over there on the left. 
thought about a lot about geometry when I was, you know, thinking about that shot and just the contrast between those shapes and the shape of the body, etc. Um, so there's just a lot that you can do with simple tools and simple lighting patterns. Uh, you know, that both the shots on the right are just two lights. Uh, again, that cross light pattern and just really kind of finessing the angle of the light feathering it a little bit, keeping it not keeping it completely directly at the body, but just kind of angling the light a little bit, working with the figure, seeing where the light is falling, uh, and you're able to create some really beautiful stuff. So give this, uh, give this pattern a try. I think you'll really enjoy it. There are um, great strip boxes that are available for speed lights. Uh, I know that uh, Lastolite has a bunch of collapsibles that work great if you wanted to kind of replicate this um, out on a soccer field or uh, you know with a football player or baseball player you know have at it great for boxers great for all sorts of athletes so go out there guys give it a give it a try swing for the fences be sure and post your results on the Shutterfest Facebook page I would love to see what you guys do and if you'd like to see um, a tutorial on the post work that I did on these which was simple but definitely you know an important part of the process I'd be happy to post it for you on Facebook so just give me a shout out and let me know if you want to see that and I will record a quick video for you on that well, that's going to wrap it up for this month until next time this has been Michael Corsentino for Shutter Magazine and we'll see you again next time bye bye